The transfer portal is going to go boom big time. I know a lot of you do not look forward to April 15th for financial reasons, but you've got a lot of coaches out there who are sweating it and biting their fingernails to the nubs right now because the transfer portal is going to go crazy. So I had someone hit me up and say, hey, with the back and forth transferring we've seen from Caden Proctor now heading back to Bama, what other craziness should we expect when the portal opens back up in the spring? So the whole Caden Proctor thing, yes, I'm going to talk about it. Actually, I'm going to touch on a little bit more later in the show, but here's basically what's happening. Caden Proctor is the number one tackle out of the country last recruiting cycle. Well, two cycles ago, I guess. And he's from Iowa, and he's committed to Iowa. He decommits from Iowa. He signs with Alabama. He starts wall-to-wall as a true freshman, gets a little homesick around Christmas, plays in the national championship semifinal, and then goes to Iowa. Hits the portal, goes to Iowa. Stays there for about 15 minutes, then decides, I'm going back in the portal. And looks like he's going back to Alabama. And a lot of you have looked and said, that's kind of ridiculous. Well, of course it is. Yes, but I will talk about that a little bit later. But the other day... Yours truly made headlines in a roundabout way because I was on the road. And here's what happens when you're on the road, guys. You talk to a whole lot of coaches and you talk to a whole lot of people in recruiting departments. And um, the Proctor stuff took a lot of you by surprise. The Proctor stuff was not, as I said on Twitter the other day, one of the three wildest rumors that I heard last week. Now, that rumor ended up coming to fruition. My point is you're going to see some things happen this April that probably make you forget about Caden Proctor. Like right now, everyone's looking saying, whoa, can you believe that happened? And I humbly am here to tell you, by the time the dust settles at the end of April, you'll say, remember when we thought the Caden Proctor flip back to Alabama was the craziest thing in the portal cycle? Yeah, so the post-spring transfer portal cycle coming up may actually be wilder than the December window which should never be the case, but apparently I think that's going to be the case this time around. So here's what's happening. There are no rules. They tore down all the speed limit signs, and I think the college football public is still severely underestimating what that actually means. Like, what kind of tangible impact is that going to have? The impact's going to be enormous. I'll tell you more about um, just how enormous that'll be in a second, but do you understand now, there were very, very few limitations on this already, but now there are no limitations. And so you haven't gotten to a cycle yet in the no limitation world. Like you have been used to there being a few limitations and, you know, there were like, you know, duct tape and paper clips holding guys in place, but now there are none. And it's only been a few weeks to a couple of months since the NCAA basically got their hands slapped and federal courts and whatnot said, no, you can't do that. There are no restrictions on anything. The first testing ground we're going to have since that happened is the post spring transfer portal window. And friends, it is going to take you by surprise. It's going to be like jumping into 50 degree water. It, it's going to, it's going to make you, uh, it's going to make you tense up for a second. A lot of you are nervous. Uh, frankly, you should be nervous because there are no players who are safe right now. And I mean no players who are safe right now. Uh, this, I think, is going to be necessary. It's not going to be good because I'm not a believer that this is good for the sport. I, uh, I know there's a pushback, like I'm solo on the desk right now. Of course, we could bring someone in here who would look me across the table and say, why isn't it good? Why shouldn't players be? Save all that. I know your point. I, I take your point. Fine. When we're having a discussion for the greater good of college football, you will never convince me that lack of roster continuity, that rosters being totally fluid all the time is good. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not good for the players. It's good for them to have the rights, but it's ultimately not in the best interest of them. It's certainly not in the best interest of schools and programs and whatnot. But anyway, the reason I say it's good that this is going to happen is because you can't change anything about how we got here. Like that's in the past. That's the definition of unchangeable. But what we can do is we can have some, some cattle prod to the neck moment, so to speak, with the sport. And one of the cattle prods to the neck, I think, um, was seeing Proctor do what he did the other day. And I think cattle prod to the neck is you're going to have head coaches have no idea who's on their team after spring ball. And in some cases, you're going to get your hearts broken over the coming month or so, and you're going to see that we have no recourse. 
we're going to get our roster rated after spring. It's going to happen to a larger degree than it's happened the previous cycles, so just get ready for it. And there are going to be some glaring examples of programs and teams that get victimized, and there are going to be some glaring examples of programs that reap the benefits of that victimization. And some of you are going to love it because your team benefits. Most of you are going to hate it because you look at it and say, holistically, this is terrible. This is not what college football should be, but it's necessary. You're right. It shouldn't be that, but it's necessary because whatever has to happen for there to be quick change, it has to be jarring. It can't be the pot of cold water that you toss the frog into and then slowly heat it up because it just slowly boils to death. But you boil the water and toss the frog in, all of a sudden he jumps. He jumps into action. Why? Because he doesn't want to boil to death. And I think similarly, you're about to see in April that goes down in the history books for roster reconstruction and deconstruction, but also probably uh, four or five years from now, whenever we've gotten this ourselves into a more settled calendar, you'll look back and you'll wonder in amazement how anyone slept at night during this period of college football. And you'll also look back and say, you know, I hated this, 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 and that at the time, but who's to say we would have gotten these changes if this, 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 and that didn't happen. Now I told you I was going to give you an example and I will anonymously here. So I have done as much due diligence for you on this as I can. I got to keep names out of it. But let me just give you an idea of what's happening out there on the college football streets right now. Everybody behind the scenes knows it's going to get really crazy in April. And so what's happening right now, I kid you not, I had someone walk me through the other day a specific position group at a, a major university out there. And uh, not only were there kids on that team in that position group that that coach knew not going to be on my team after April 20th or 25th. But also this group, this group of coaches knew who they were going to backfill with. And the names that they're going to backfill with are on other rosters currently. That's not an isolated example. Just so happens to be one I'm privy to. It's not an isolated example. That is, I would venture to say, closer to the rule right now than the exception. And it's not that everyone wants to play that game. In fact, we had Kirby Smart on the show a couple of weeks ago. Remember what he said? He said, I could do with everything else if you just tell me who's going to be on my team. If I just knew, starting with spring, this is my roster for this year. I don't even care. I don't like it, but they could transfer as many times as they want to. But can we please just lock something in in January or February where we know we're going to go through a full calendar season with guys? Well, the answer is hopefully one day, yes, fingers crossed. But right now, no, no, you cannot. And there are going to be some big time, not, not just role players, big time impact players who are about to be on different rosters come fall. Preview Magazine culture is going to have a conniption fit, as Meemaw used to say. How are you supposed to print your magazines? Don't let that ink dry. Don't let that ink dry.